Take 24. Hello. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tony uh, from Phono Stage Audio and welcome to the Phono Stage YouTube channel. Uh, I'm really pleased to see you all here. Um, the YouTube channel, if you haven't realised already, is fairly new. We haven't got that many videos on at this time, but we're adding more all the time. I am doing reviews right now uh, and I've got a number of different um, video reviews planned. So if you like what we've done so far and you'd like to see more of it, uh, please like and subscribe and share uh, our videos, subscribe to our channel, help us to um, forge our direction in the hi-fi world with your comments and uh, your suggestions maybe as to what you might like to hear and all that kind of stuff. I can't believe it, the phone has gone off. Hello. I'm making a video and you've just, you're on it. You're on it, you're speaking on it, yeah. Sorry, can you not pause the video? No, 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 I'm on take 24. Oh, okay, I'll leave you to it. Okay then, is it is it urgent? What? Is it urgent? No. No, okay. No urgency, all right, bye. All right, thanks, bye. Sorry about that. Right, let's start again. Hello, I'm Tony from Phono Stage Audio. <laughs> start again. Hello, I'm Tony from Phono Stage Audio. Ah, <laughs> oh, tell you what. Hello, I'm Tony from Phono Stage Audio, and welcome to the Phono Stage Video Channel. Um, I'm very pleased to see you all here today. Um, I really appreciate the time. That you would that you spend uh, watching the video reviews and checking out what we've got to say about different things. Um, I'm keen to do more video reviews of things. You know, some of the equipment that we've got here, some of the things that we've been promised. Um, I'd like to get through the exposure range, which I love, uh, the grain sleep propious mono blocks, which we've been asked for a review of. Um, uh, various different speakers that we've got scattered around the place. So, um, so stick with us, please. Uh, it's a pretty new channel, We're trying to get it going. We've had some very good comments and quite a few subscribers this week, which I really appreciate. So thanks very much, everybody. Please like and subscribe um, to this video and to the channel. And also, if you could, just share the video with anybody who's interested in this kind of thing. So, right, why am I here? That's not uh, some existentialist question. Why am I here? Right, over the last couple of weeks um, I've had quite a few comments in response to me reviewing the Graham Audio LS5 9F, which is a, a beast of some distinction. Um, and a lot of the comments, uh, a lot of the questions I've been asked are, yeah, that's great, really love it, can we also have a review of the Grey Audio LS6F? So, um, and I had had a listen to both, but I really wanted to give the LS6F a lot more listening with a lot more, lot more tunes and a bit more gear and really try and get a feel from them a little bit. So today is the uh, much requested and long awaited um, review of the Grey Audio LS6F or the Grey Audio Chartwell LS6F as it's, um, as it's technically called. Right, so where do I begin? Right, I haven't written anything down. You know that I'm principally against it. Um, I'm just gonna kinda go for it really and see uh, where I get. So, right, the LS6F is not like the LS59F. We'll start with that because uh, I've had people have said, what's it like compared to the LS59F? I mean, you can compare it, okay? I mean, they're made by the same company. They've got a similar sort of a, kind of an ethos, really, and the kind of BBC-esque, monetary-esque type of a, a style. But they are actually quite different. They're a little bit more different than I thought they would be when they turned up in cardboard boxes a little while ago. Um, and how are they different? Well, before I go into any great detail about it, just in a kind of nutshell, um, these are a fuller sounding speaker. Okay, so the... The LS6F, even though it's not as big, is actually a fuller sounding speaker. That's not to say that it 
it's not to say that it sounds like there's more at the very bottom, more frequency, you know, that it doesn't go lower. I mean, with the LS59F, you know, I do pick up, you know, some very low notes. But um, as you track your way up the scale a little bit, say like with a bass guitar doing kind of a run or something like that, uh, you find that um, that these will kind of throw that out at you a little bit more. Further up the scale, you can track the bass, the tune of the bass. Um, with these, a little bit less so, and you kind of find yourself listening for things like that uh, a bit harder. There's nothing missing from either, just to be very clear, so it is there. But then um, these, when you're listening to something like, um, there's a song uh, called Paper Tiger by Beck, um, and that is, uh, if you want to go and listen to that, you'll find that there are some strings that come in and come out, come in, go out pretty quickly. They've got reverb on them and they're quite... Um, what you're listening to, what you're listening to that track on, uh, what equipment, uh, really changes how those strings come out. So they sound pretty kind of well balanced on these. Uh, you know, you notice them, you know, you definitely notice them and they sound really good. But you can't help but notice them with these because they kind of like jump out, you know, so and so do some acoustic guitars and such like um, to the point where uh, if there's a lot of that going on, you know, you might uh, favour more of a balanced sort of sounding speaker like this, you know, where you've got a bit more of the low end to balance it out. Whereas if it's quite sort of a broken down kind of a acoustic music or um, something that's not too heavy or anything like that, then you really might prefer, you know, these because uh, you want all those individual elements jumping out at you. It's just that when there's a lot of individual elements jumping out at you at once, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So, um, so what I'm thinking about here is the type of music that you listen to, uh, the musicality of the speaker rather than just its ability to critically analyse every individual part of it. And, um, and just what's generally nice to listen to as well as you're walking around, you know. So uh, not every uh, sit down at the hi-fi session is um, a critical analysis of every component in it and every reverb tail in it and every everything else in it. Um, although I, I do sort of lean a bit that way sometimes, I have to confess. So, um, did this this uh, excellent uh, Rode Wireless Go, did that pick up my stomach rumbling then? If it did, you're going to have to put up with it, right? Because this is take 24 and I haven't had my tea yet. Um, right, so the Graham Audio LS6F. We're going to stop talking about the LS59F now. If you want to learn a bit more of that, go and watch the other video. The LS6F... Uh, I have been listening to it for a few weeks and more intensely so in the last two weeks uh, um, in response to people's questions and knowing, having that sense of impending doom that that is going to be my next video and I'm going to have to sit here for ages and talk about it. So the LS6F has had some listening and what have I listened to it on? Uh, the Aston True, which I'm going to talk about in another review because I've become a big fan of it. Uh, the Exposure 2510, that was the amp that we first heard it on and we uh, left that running overnight for a, a week or something like that and, and kind of ran these in a bit with the 2510, so I couldn't escape from it. I've, I've heard it quite a lot with that. Um, and the Graham Slee Proprius Mono Blocks and the Majestic uh, preamp DAC. Um, even uh, some, some things you might not have heard of, like these uh, Temple Audio Mono Blocks. Uh, uh, a nice chap left those with me that he was reviewing them and he left those with me to uh, to have a go at uh, this week so of course I tried them with these and even uh, a mist myst a mist 80s integrated amp uh, probably long forgotten but a qualitative thing very interesting so um, so I've tried it with a, a few different bits of equipment probably something else as well but it escapes me Music, oh God, it's the usual suspects, isn't it, with me? You know, I have sort of tried a bit of jazz and a bit classical, which were great. Um, 
not quite as outstanding as in like uh, certainly for the jazz, the non-busy jazz as, as the bigger ones, which we're not talking about. Don't talk about them. Um, Granddaddy, the software slump is an old favourite of mine. I think it's beautifully produced. I think it's really nice. And I want to talk a bit about how these behave in minor at the dial of you. So if you know that song, I hope, well, I hope you do. If you don't know it, I suggest you listen to it. It's a, it's a great song. So, uh, Granddaddy, uh, Beck, uh, as I already said. Um, the Flaming Lips, because the synths, big synths, quite bassy synths, you know, you can sort of like, uh, you can get away with that better on these than on those, which we're not talking about. Uh, what else? I can't remember. Radiohead, yeah, Radiohead. Uh, the Who, oh, there's, to be honest, there's been all sorts really. So, um, and I can't remember them all, but I know, I know which ones particularly stand out to me. So, uh, in summary, the Graham Audio Chartwell LS6F, floor standing version of the LS6, which is a very well respected stand mounting speaker, has become just about my favourite speaker. I could honestly say, until I next say it, if I've heard something else that's trumped it. I listen to these, uh, I, I'm a fan of, of totem speakers, okay, so uh, we, we don't deal with totem speakers here, you know, or anything like that, you know that, but I'm, I'm a big fan of totem speakers, and one of my favourite speakers uh, is the Totem Hawks, which I have a pair, I'm looking at them now, square in the eye. I like uh, one of my other favourite speakers is the Spender BC1, which is an old speaker, uh, and I've had lots of pairs of those, some more mismatched than others, but they're all beautiful in their own way, even when the cabinets have got cup rings all over them. I just like them, you know, they're like a rescued untidy dog. They're very, very, very beautiful speakers to listen to. Um, and I really love these speakers and and a few others. But I can honestly say that my favourite listen at the moment, because it seems to do a bit of all those things, the, the precision and the lovely, natural, trebly gorgeousness of the totems and that kind of full sound and the mid-range of the spenders and all that stuff just seems to do it all really well. Um, it's such a well-balanced sound. It's it's kind of fuller, it's a bit beefier sounding and a bassier than, than the other Graham Audio speakers I've heard so far, but um, not at the expense of clarity. You know, you've also, um, and there's also the filter switch here, the little way you can actually knock it up, plus one and plus two, which I have also tried. And that can be useful for when you change the balance of an amplifier. Uh, so say going from the Graham sleeves, which are quite, um, they're quite bright and dynamic sounding. And then the Aston True is quite warm and kind of sexy sounding. Uh, and you could, if you wanted to, knock it up to a one with the Aston True. And you do get a, a more information out of it. So um, at the very top end, so obviously that is there, present in the Aston True. You can't make it, you can't make it up. This isn't some kind of fictitious, you know, music making switch. If it doesn't exist in the first place, you're not going to hear it. So it's not a qualitative reflection on any, any particular amplifier. You can just adjust it a little bit to tune, uh, to tune your ears to a sound that you prefer. Maybe you've got a bit of a roll off going on with age. You know, you're losing a few frequencies. Maybe your room is plush more plush than this, you know, gorgeous, I don't know, settees everywhere and drapes and I don't know, whatever, nice things. Well, this has got one nice thing in this chair, it's got a settee over there. Um, so, you know, they're very versatile in that respect. They're full, they've got great bass, they go down really low, you can play Billie Eilish on them and completely get away with it. You can hear all that sort of like sub bass uh, and all the things that Phineas was doing in his bedroom. Uh, you can't hear all the things Phineas was doing in his bedroom, let's make that clear. But yes, um, 
you can hear it all and you can hear it very well. They never lose control of any of that. Um, they're not a, a bassy speaker in the sense of like, you know, not a pair of Serwin Vegas or anything like that. But they're, um, they, they definitely are a bit of a departure from the BBC-esque sound. I was listening to some LS35s, not 35As, LS35s, a few hours ago in the other room. And uh, some LS59s, not the Fs, a few hours ago in the other room. And coming back in, you know, they're, they're, they're a they're different nature of sound. And when you listen, kind of like when you get, when your ears are recalibrated to there being a fuller sound and more bass and all that sort of stuff, you realise that the mids and the treble that um, the other ones are so famous for um, is there as well. Because the proportions have changed, you do have to recalibrate your listening a little bit. You know, it's, um, you know, they, it's like, oh, there's no technical explanation for this that I can come up with. It's like, uh, you don't get more bottom out of these by removing the top, right? It's almost like you get more bottom out of them by adding more bottom. So uh, now that, that may or may not make any sense whatsoever. But when you conjure things up in your mind, when you come up with a way of describing something that, that matches what your head is perceiving, that's the best I can do under pressure. So... Um, have a listen to um, Minor at the Dial of You, okay, for me, if you can. I've been streaming it here on uh, HD. And in that, the song is great. It develops further and further and further. And in the extreme left and the extreme right, you start to get kind of acoustic guitars coming in. And it's a full sweeping sound to the track. There are synths which sound full bodied. They don't just sound kind of like, like they've already been, you know, swept and they're up at the higher registers, you know, like of the frequencies. Um, you hear the full synth, you know, you hear the kind of the low resonances and you hear the high resonances and you can, you can really track those filter sweeps all the way through. And the guitars are clear, even, even low volume guitars, you can pick them out, you know, that they're, they're very three-dimensional, brilliant stereo imaging. You know, really, really, really good. Uh, even with even with an integrated amp, I get a bit spoiled sometimes with the mono blocks, but uh, tried it with a couple of uh, integrated amps. Just recently tried them, and again, again, I had the old, that, the old mist amp, that the chap that brought the Temple Audio, he brought the mist amplifier. Still very three-dimensional with that. I didn't really get a chance to listen to it more and I wish I had. So, um, great stereo imaging. Um, I never really fully understood the technical reason for, for, for better stereo imaging. I know it's got a lot to do with, um, it's got a lot to do with whereabouts the speaker is placed on the surface of the baffle. Um, I think it's got a lot to do with the quality of the drivers generally so that they stay exactly in phase and moving at exactly the same rate the way they should. The amplifier plays a big part in it. Um, I think the frequencies that are covered or the, fe the frequencies that clearly come out because the speaker is able to, you know, make one ching on a triangle or a little bell sound like one ching on a triangle and little bell. If it's able to identify what's coming in on that wire, what instrument it is and recreate it well enough, okay, then it means that that particular instrument, that particular element of the music is so clearly identified, it will have a very specific place. And I think when things are less well identified, um, which you would get with a lesser speaker, still might overall sound brilliant, but the, um, the ability of the speaker to discern each individual element uh, so well is slightly um, watered down. 
So if imagine, instead of narrowing it to this is your instrument, it's here, it sort of becomes a bit more like a here, and then maybe it overlaps with something else, and then maybe it overlaps with something else. So your overall stereo image isn't quite as three-dimensional and transparent. Uh, again, it might be total and utter claptrap, but that's how I picture it. It's important to realise, I think, and I've learned this about the reviewing because um, there's lots of, um, I'm not critical of, of other reviewers because they're brilliant, right? They're really good at writing. They know loads of stuff. They've heard loads of gear. A lot of them have got engineering backgrounds or whatever it is. Uh, and I love reading reviews of things. You know, sometimes you go down a rabbit hole and you can't get back out of it. Well, my way of articulating things is uh, to not to try not to be too much like that. I just find that I'm not too much like that because a lot of the people that are wanting to buy something like this uh, or want to hear what some, try and imagine what something like this sounds like, um, kind of uh, don't, don't have that golden-eared language. So we've learned to tune into it and understand kind of what it means. But I like to describe things in slightly more tangible terms or the way that my head kind of, you know, builds up a picture of what something's really like. I see, I see like, um, like a, like a, a semicircular or like an arc in front of me of the sound. And, um, and I do listen to where things are within that very much like anybody else does but i also must remind myself to listen to the whole thing you know it's not just about listening to individual elements but how how three-dimensional and transparent so you can see it from front to back you know instruments don't seem to just appear on a flat plane they seem to have some kind of height and depth to them and i think i read somewhere once that creating that the the depth of instruments um, has, has a lot to do with production techniques about how reverb is managed and things like that so um, there is a science behind it but the ability of the speakers to recreate that is very 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 important to me I like to listen to speakers that give me a three-dimensional and transparent sound and in that respect uh, the Graham audio this the Chartwell LS6F has become my at the moment, favourite speaker. Right, okay, so um, where do we go next? I wanted to talk to everybody about uh, running in, right, running in. Um, a, a much maligned and much revered subject as well. Uh, I do hear it said, you know, people say, oh, you know, it makes no difference burning in cables or whatever like that. Well, maybe, maybe not. That's a discussion for another day. But what I will say is you do definitely need to run in your speakers. They're a mechanical device. Um, you know, there's moving parts and they definitely benefit, audibly, audibly benefit from being run. So um, just give an example. So when I got, uh, when we got these out the box and we got these out the box, um, certainly it's more, more noticeable with the LS59F, right? It's just sounded great. You could tell it was a high quality sound that, was, that you were listening to. We were sat, you know, they sounded really, really good. Um, but it, it became it became evident that um, that something wasn't quite right with them. You know, I found myself questioning, you know, are they, are they really that good? And, you know, I, I wasn't sure about something, you know. Uh, it was like, I, I, I'd say coherence, really, because when music sort of got busier, they didn't get busier with it. Um, and I felt like they should do. It still sounded everything was there I and mean, it sounded kind of qualitatively and quantitatively pretty good but it just didn't just didn't um it didn't impact on me the way that i felt i was expecting it to and um so I, but i'd left them running in then for about four days left them both running in in the same room together you know there's was chaos in there um and I came back to them and they sounded a lot better. And then we've had a number of demos with them and I've listened to them quite a lot. Uh, both sets, um, they were on today. You know, I just kind of like keep playing them and they just sound better all the time. 
Um, I mean, they really genuinely do. You know, they're a pleasure to listen to, both sets. So, um, and the, the great thing about it is, is that um, they're going to continue to get better because I, I can't remember the figure. Um, Graham, the Graham Audio sales agent had given me a figure that, that somebody had come up with to him about how many hundreds of hours they can take to run in fully. Um, the ls 59 fs he was talking about, I think, in particular. And it was an astonishing figure. And I thought, well, how can you con continue to hear differences after X amount of hours? You know, surely it must be, a, must be a curve that starts to progressively level out. You know, you'd have to have pretty fine hearing. But, um, but as they stand now, as the LS6Fs stand now, I will be happy with that sound forever. And the great news is they're very highly likely to improve even further. And that really cheers me up a lot. Um, so that's, that's running in. And, and it kind of relates really to, to the next bit, which is um, in response to questions that people have been posting, can you do a review of this? What do you think of that? People say, what do we think of the LS58s? What do we think of the LS35As? Um, I'd said something about the LS59 sounding like a big LS35A, which I'm sure, you know, one day I'll either be revered for it or I'll regret it. But what one way or the other, you know, um, I have then in response been asked if I'll do a review of the 59s. So, um, yeah, I will do a review of the five nines. That'll be coming up next. Um, well, maybe not next. I'll have to decide because I'm going to sort of reorganize this channel a bit. I'm doing quite a few Graham Audio um, features. So I'll create a Graham Audio section uh, playlist, if you will. And, uh, and then I can do all my other amplifiers and a lot of my other stuff in another one. You know, as we do more videos, I need to get more organized. Um, so getting back to what's coming up and requests off people. Yeah, I want to show you something. Just, right, give us a sec. Here's one I made earlier. This is heavy. Right. Oh, bloody hell. Right, I just want to show you this. Right, are you too close? Can you see that? So this is an LS59, okay? And I um, hope you can see that all right. It's a very heavy uh, but pretty compact speaker, and this... This unusual looking creature. This was made for the Berlin Audio Show. Ah, I'm gonna have to put it down. It was made for the Berlin Audio Show a couple of years ago, longer really. Um, probably just a 2017, possibly. I think I've got it. It's written on the boxes, the boxed and everything, you know, and they're in really nice condition. They've never been sold. Um, They've just been demonstrated uh, and they've been in the hands of a couple of dealers that have done demos with them for people and um, they've been in storage for quite a long time. So they're kind of a new uh, ex-demo speaker that's just been around for a while. You know, it's been it's turned up in magazines and one thing and another. Well, I've actually managed to get my hands on the set, but they're not mine to keep forever. So um, I do have to sell them. So as long as long as long as nobody buys them off me, um, they will be subject to my LS59 review. Um, otherwise, I'll, I'll put a little framed photo of them at the side of me and we'll do it that way. We'll figure something out. Um, but getting on to, back to the running in thing, um, yeah, when I listened to those, this coherence I was looking for, uh, like a, it just it was there in spades. They were just so nice to listen to. I had a friend round, he had a listen, and he'd been doing part of the demo, part of the demo of the 59Fs, which I you know we're not talking about, but we keep lapsing into it. Um, part of that demonstration was done with, with a friend of mine, he's a big hi-fi enthusiast, and uh, he came back and heard the LS59s, and you know he preferred those, even though he likes a big speaker. Um, but I really do put it down to that these have got a lot more running in to do. They sound run in. They sound like they've got nowhere else to go. And they're absolutely fantastic. So I'm very, very enthused by the prospect of getting more miles and more hours on these speakers. And I would also say, um, I would also say, try and listen to some if you can. 
Okay, I'm trying to describe the differences. I'm trying to create like a, a visual, like a, I'm trying to really, truly give you some sort of tangible vision of what they really sound like. I'd like to have a good imagination for it when I've done with it. Um, because you might just decide to order some. If you want to order some, give us a ring. But um, you might just decide to order some on face value. But I would say, given that it's become evident that speakers can be so different in nature, uh, even across the same manufacturer, um, try and listen to them if you can. And for those of you who don't know, some, some of you do know, I realise that we, we also have some further flung um, kind of watches and followers now. Um, we're in the northwest of England, in Lancashire. So uh, if you're not a million miles away and you fancy a drive out of a weekend or something like that to, to have a demonstration of these before deciding on anything, then it'd be lovely to see you. You know, it really would. We'll put you in for a demonstration and you can have a good prod at them. Uh, maybe not literally. And, uh, you know, you can make your own mind up. And then it doesn't really matter what I say, does it? Um, so, yeah, we can demonstrate them. Um, yeah, one more thing, just thinking forward. Thinking forward. Um, for my, with reference to my comment that the LS59 sound like a big LS35A. Well, I've got something else to show you. This is another one coming up for review and for discussion. Got some of these. Now, um, these look like LS35As. I'm sure you've seen many. One of my favourite speakers, the LS35A. Uh, but these are actually LS35s. Okay, a little bit of a rare animal, really. A bit different. Aren't they beautiful? See that? So they're coming up. So if the LS59s do sound anything like a large LS35A, then we'll know about it, won't we? Um, and then just one final point. I would say, uh, going back to what I said at the beginning about them being a well-rounded speaker, I have learned that there is nothing, um, they don't leave me wishing for anything. And they don't leave me having to be forgiving of anything. You know, like we have this kind of forgiving hi-fi nature. It works like this, right? So you, you get a pair of LS35As and you absolutely love them and they become one of your favourite speakers. Get them at close quarters. Um, and I, we forgive them, don't we? We think, oh, we know they've not got any bass. I know that I can't hear. There's something there I can't hear. But I don't mind because I love them. I love the mid-range. I love this. I love that. Um, so when we, look, when we love something dearly enough, you know, we, we focus more on the strengths and forgive the foibles or the absences or whatever it is, you know, the other stuff going on. Um, well, in my relationship with the LS6Fs, I really just don't think I've got very much at all. I can't think of anything obvious to forgive, you know, or to ignore or to focus just more on the strengths. I mean, for me personally, um, I think they're just about perfect for my tastes. Um, the, LS, the LS59F, um, I think, is a perfect sounding speaker in many ways. Uh, for my taste... I would select more carefully the music I listen to on the LS59Fs, whereas with these, I would play anything on them and I wouldn't care. It would sound nice. So, um, and it's, that's, that's very much the case with anything in life. You know, like, a, you know, a Ferrari isn't going to go particularly well, I don't know, off-road or, you know, like a, a Lamborghini is clumsy in close quarters in the city. You know, so it's like... Um, when things get really quite specialised, it does kind of limit the flexibility a little bit. I think that's where I'm trying to go with it. So, I mean, so so that is it for me for now. Looking forward to doing the next review. Um, please like and subscribe, and then you know uh, what is coming up, and share the videos. This is a new YouTube channel. I'm doing this... Um, I'm doing this uh, kind of because I love it so much. Yeah, it is. It's not a thankless task for me, this. 
you know, I could sit and do a um, shiny white background, crispy reviews of products and say this is our store and all the other stuff. But I also am be reviewing my own stuff and people are lending me stuff that I'd like to, that I'm going to be doing reviews of. So, yeah, you know, this is just about me being terribly into hi-fi stuff and wanting to share my vision of it with you because I believe that I really, that, that I have developed one over the years. So um, let us know what you think about the video and let us know what else you might like to hear if you've seen anything dotted around our place. Um, and if you have any questions about the LS6Fs or any of the things that we've reviewed. And, um, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very, very much indeed. <laughs>